Hi, everybody. Christy G. Noni back in week four of our MP590 organizational theory course. This week, we're taking a look at systems theory, some of the early theorists, and how their applications can apply to our task force concept. So systems theory is not a distinct school of thought, but a shared commitment to systems analysis. And the first systems analysis taking a look at is natural systems theory, focusing on early theorist Chester Barnard. So like um, many of the themes that we see running through our Schaffritz and Tompkins book, theorists are usually building off another individual's work. Uh, so many theories built off economist Pareto by way of biochemist Henderson, hence the terms that we hear in natural systems theory like systems, equilibrium, some of these more scientific terms. Uh, Chester Barnard and natural systems theory really focus on that relationship between the organization and the environment that it operates in. So it's not really taking a look at any outside factors. It did focus on soft skills like communication, and Barnard conceptualized organizations as social systems and sought to understand them as organic wholes. One of the interesting factors on page 202 is talking about the human behavior and how its social and psychological determinants into the mainstream of organizational analysis are important. So it's taking a look again at that derivative of what is driving individuals to do something, which is what these early theorists were really trying to take a look and put down into writing, into research, into text. And so while there is a criticism of this managerialism that Chester Barnard was talking about, um, I don't know that the framework is irrelevant to organizational research, but I don't find it applying um, very strongly to my task force concept. And so the journal article that I found really focused again on more criticism of Barnard, and it talks about how he failed to distinguish between authority and power. And so while there's talk a lot about this higher hierarchy, um, you know, how we can position individuals to be leaders within the system um, and what drives that human motivational behavior, some of the research can come off as more power heavy, which would not be as helpful in a collaborative task force like the one that I'm working with. Next up, taking a look at Robert Merton and structural functional theory or middle range theory. And this was an approach to theory construction. And so that lack of flexibility that he talks about um, not being bad and rethinking living organism concept really kind of goes against the natural systems theory or that internal focus. Overall, um, Merton really talked about those bureaucratic dysfunctions, and again, focusing on um, page 213, talks about meaning people attached to actions. And so trying to, again, find that human behavior of why things are happening within an organization. He also talks about those latent functions and manifest functions. Latent functions are those functions which are unintended or have unrecognized consequences. Um, they are present, but they're not immediately obvious. And on the other hand, the intended, conscious, or deliberate functions um, are those that we call manifest functions. So the journal article that I found, um, Integrated Theory and Empirical Research, Merton thought that grand theorization may come um, as not being so important if it can't be applied to actual research and criticized theoretically guided work. So like our professors are always telling us we need to put theory to practice and he wanted more empirical data. I think this can be used for my task force concept by trying to find the commonalities um, that are causing the issues that is creating this task force in general. So if we can take a look at some of these social behaviors, uh, we can see what is causing the root problem and try to fix it from there. Something that stood out in this chapter um, was another theorist, Alvin Goldner, on page 221. And Goldner concluded that Weber, um, in emphasizing the functional consequence consequences of rules, ignored the important consequences that flow not from the rules themselves, but from the manner in which they are initiated and administered. So again, kind of finding that driving force of why people are doing what they're doing. And last, in one of the... Um, open systems theories and the theories that I found most applicable to my task force is open systems with Katz and Kahn. And Katz and Kahn said they really different, um, differed from the school of thought from other theories like Weber, Taylor, Gulick, because they criticized them as being closed system thinkers. And so open systems focuses on exchanges with the environment and how to maintain that equilibrium. And so systems organizations must interact with their environment in order to survive, otherwise they will deteriorate. So this is a big one for the task force because the equilibrium is currently off and we need to see what that factor is. Is it the economy? Is it just the competitive? 
competitive competitiveness of the public sector? Is the pandemic having driving forces? And so this open systems theory focused on rethinking systems, which is what I'm emphasizing needs to be done in government in general. There is no one best way, and we need to adjust the way that we're doing things so we can get that um, workforce that's going to be motivated to be a public servant and be qualified to be serving the citizens that they're working for. It's a great example of these permeable ba permeable boundaries um, that Katz and Khan talked about, that outside environment. And so we need to take a look at how any other factors of competitiveness are affecting public agencies and why we're not getting these qualified individuals. On page two for 240, um, Ludwig von Bertolfini, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, I found that his concept of looking at things as systems in general could be applicable to the task force because if this concept works under the San Gabriel Valley cog, maybe it can be something that every type of agency can expand upon going into counties um, and maybe other uh, council governments as well. Lastly, under open systems theory, taking a look at the structural contingency theory, and this can build models to help us predict how changes in environments will have an impact on the management system within an organization. So again, if we can take a look at these factors of maybe why individuals aren't staying within public agencies very long, why they don't have an interest in it, we can make predictable models within this task force to try and prevent that from happening. And then I was able to find a really cool journal article. I don't think that this con is related to either of the cats and con, um, but this talks about the psychological conditions of personal engagement and disengagement at work. And it linked personal engagement with job satisfaction. So what some of these um, theories we're talking about, like cats and con and the open system theories, is really trying to distinguish what those motivating factors are. And it can't always be, you know, something that can be grouped together for one big system. Everyone's got an individual motivation. And being able to determine how those outside factors are, in fact, are affecting the organization inside can really help to figure out what those triggers are and create different policies, managerial strategies to help thwart them. All right, thank you everybody. Happy first week of fall and I look forward to hearing your presentations as well.